Hey guys, what's up? It's Mad Ed, and today we will be doing MCAT tips and a special giveaway of an MCAT Kaplan book set, so stay tuned. Alright, so the first tip has to do with the MCAT diagnostic exam. So there's a lot of companies who offer these diagnostic exams, but to a lot of people they interpret the agnostic exam, the agnostic exam or diagnostic exam very different than I do. Uh, a lot of people use it for kind of gauging where their weaknesses are. I have a different point of view. I think if you are in tune with who you are as a learner and where your strengths lie in the concepts, and I think a lot of you do, taking the diagnostic exam as a kind of gauge to where you're at is a waste because you could pretty much finish the exam and it will tell you, oh, you're low in biochem, you're not good at that. And if you know generally that you're not good at biochem, you're gonna go in, take the exam, it's gonna tell you the exact same thing you knew when you're going into the exam. So my advice is actually to use the diagnostic exam around a month after content review. So with this being a diagnostic exam, obviously it won't be like as hard as the real test. Some of them are half lengths, um, but what taking it after a month of content review does is lets you know, are you ready or not to kind of start moving away from content review and more into practice tests or do you really need more help with content review? So I think the score that is kind of telling of where you need to go is around a 502. 505, 502 is about the range where if you're below that, you probably need more content review. A lot of your score boosts are gonna come out of knowing the content more. If you are above a 505, Five, five, sorry, a 500 to a 502, depending on who you are and what your goal is. If you're above that, you might want to start weaning yourself a little bit off of majority content review and start doing more of the practice, practice aspect of studying for the MCAT. Because after a certain score on the MCAT, after a certain score on your practice test, what you know and don't know as far as content doesn't really matter. It's about how you test and how you can pick up the patterns and the testing. My second tip kind of goes with the first know your strengths and weaknesses and keep a written list of your weaknesses so a lot of times we kind of glance past a concept and we're like Ooh, don't really understand that but if you don't write it down you might not remember it or you might for some reason in hindsight think oh i would have known it had i just read it once bye but at least reading it and not understanding it and writing it down at least reminds you that once upon a time i did not understand this concept so keeping that list allows you to kind of work with those more in an objective manner than kind of forgetting about what you don't know. So that leads into my third tip is to don't study comfortable. That sounds like a terrible thing to tell someone who's studying for the MCAT because the MCAT is not a fun exam. Like I don't know if there's any way of sugarcoating the MCAT to be a fun exam, but I definitely have not heard of one yet. Studying for the MCAT is going to be uncomfortable and if it is uncomfortable, you're doing it right. And what I mean by comfortable is that a lot of people who study for the exam like to look at things that make them happy because they understand it. They like to look at concepts that they work well with and that they know and largely because it makes them very comfortable. You need to not prioritize things that are easy for you and in the opposite, prioritize things that are hard for you because that is where you're gonna start picking up points. If you already are good at a topic, you're not going to pick off points on studying the same topic over and over. Another tip kind of focuses on when to take the MCAT or I guess how much time you allot for studying for the MCAT. So a lot of people kind of go in with around a three month period wanting to study for the MCAT and that's a perfectly normal and fine period. That's about how long I studied for it, how long most of my friends studied for it. Very normal. With three months, you're allowed to kind of have more freedom to engage in other things that you need to, like work or school if you're in school in the moment. And past three months is usually whenever you are in school and you have a lot of things to do. I was able to do three months because I only took 12 hours. It's not very much. Um, but if you're gonna schedule uh, your MCAT to where you have to study during school, give yourself more than three months, I would say, because it is a lot when you combine it with school. So give yourself enough time, but don't give yourself too much time. Uh, too much time is definitely a thing. I would say like five months is too much time. In hindsight, this is another tip, I would have allowed myself more time for practice. 
So I think a lot of people think that a month of practice is enough. I, looking back, do not agree because like I said earlier in the video, if there comes a point where content review, which you know is not going to get you more points. And around that, uh, depending on the, the company's practice method you're taking, um, for Kaplan, I know around like a 504, 505, um, around then, for a lot of people, it wasn't content that was going to boost them anymore. At that point, they really could not get a higher score by reading the Kaplan content books. What came in then was the Kaplan practice test or the AMC's practice test or a lot of different uh, sources of practice that boosted score after that 504, 505 range. And that kind of goes back to taking that uh, diagnostic exam uh, just to give you that kind of score and see where you're at. And if you're around a 502, 503, you're getting to the point to where you need to start weaning out of content review and start going to practice tests. You schedule your studying sessions. Start off um, with a kind of general schedule where you want to go with your weaknesses piled to the front and also throughout just more frequent than things that are uh, more easy for you. So I also suggest as far as studying for content, a lot of people like to study book by book. So they like to finish the biology book and then they like to go to the biochemistry book and finish that. I would say that's not such a bad idea, but not allowing yourself to see things over and over from day to day or every other day. I also think studying biology one day and then gym chem one day and then biology and then psychology one day, like that's too frequent. It doesn't give your brain enough time to adapt and get better at the material. You don't give your brain enough time to learn it, sleep on it, and see it again the next day. Um, so what I advise, my advice to do, is to go um, either subject by subject. So I would do, if I did subjects, I would do uh, lipids one day and uh, lipid metabolism the next day. And then those two days would be metabolism, lipids and all that stuff. Then maybe do psychology one day, psychology the next day, and then switch back to biochem. And then you could go to bio and add those in depending on how um, strong you are at those topics. So you're cycling kind of towards your needs, but you're also not cycling too much. Like you're giving it like, you're giving yourself like two to three days to stay on a topic and then go to the next subject. But you're also not just staying on one subject for a whole like, three weeks and then switching to another one. Um, so that's my advice for scheduling. It works different for everyone. Everyone's different with different time schedules and different strengths. Um, so I would say sit down and give yourself enough time to kind of paint where you're going. Don't make it too strict to where if you fall one day, you're not able to get back up and catch up. Um, be able to adapt to the schedule, but make one that give yourself a general guide for it and also give yourself rest days. That's also another part of this tip. Rest days are super important. I like to do, or I did do, some people like to do a whole rest day. I don't like doing that because I don't like giving my brain too much of time off of it. But instead of doing a whole day, I would do half days. So I would do, I would study for Friday up into a certain time, like 3 p.m. Like I'm done studying for them cat. Have that rest of the day to rest, do whatever I want. Saturday would be the same thing. So instead of doing a whole day on one day, I split it into two. That's just the way I like to do it to keep, keep my brain kind of exposed to the material. Another tip is to not skip scheduled free, uh, full lengths. So if you schedule full lengths, take them because even if you feel tired or you really don't want to do it, the day you schedule your MCAT is the day you're taking the MCAT, whether or not you feel tired or you don't want to do it. With that being said, I do think um, there is too close of a time to schedule full lengths. So with full lengths, there is the most beneficial aspect in studying the questions you got wrong, looking at the concepts that you got wrong. That is where you get the most benefit from the full lengths and you need a lot of time to do that. And I think a big thing that helped me is whenever you get a question wrong, don't just figure out why the answers are wrong and why that question's right. That's obviously the basis of you're doing a full length, but also go and look back in your book and your notes and videos on that concept. I think that's where it helped me a lot um, because that question, you got it wrong for a reason, but it's not always just rested in, oh, oh sometimes it is the question was worded weirdly to you, or you didn't understand what they were asking. And in that case, 
it might not be the concept that you don't understand but if it is if it is missed because of a concept misconception figuring out what's wrong and what's right is not enough you have to go further and dig deeper and figure out why you're not getting this concept by going to YouTube videos or your books or anything else um, so it does take time so give yourself enough time to take full lengths don't put them like in the same week give yourself at least a week between full lengths and uh, you should be good for taking the next one by the time you finish reviewing the previous one. Another tip is to acclimate yourself to the environment that you will be taking the test in. So it will be early, most exams are started at 8 a.m. And if you take your practice exams all the time at 2 p.m. or you wake up to study for the MCAT around 12, um, that's not gonna be good for, I uh, guess, acclimating your body and your mind to the testing uh, scenario. My biggest advice is to wake up at, if you can, wake up at 7 a.m. and start studying in the morning because you'll be taking the test in the morning. And I finished around, I think, what time was it? I might be wrong. Someone cite me on this in the comments if I'm wrong. But I think I finished around like 2.30, 3 o'clock. Um, and if you start studying at 2.30, 3 o'clock, that will be very different than the actual situation. So put yourself in that scenario as much as possible. And along with waking up and studying at the same time, also give yourself the, the testing environment scenario. So no phones, um, very quiet area. Don't study in a crowded area, um, but also don't study in too quiet of an area because there will be people coughing and clicking and typing and doing this and it will get on your nerves if you don't have the, I guess, uh, the experience in a kind of medium level noise uh, environment. My last tip is just to take care of yourself and be good to yourself. Uh, it's gonna get hard sometimes, it does get tough and the motivation levels do sink every once in a while and it happens to everyone. Know that this is happening to kids across America, across the world, honestly, and Studying for standardized tests is never really easy for anyone, really not me, because I do not like them. But rest assured that you're going to get there someday. Also find a study buddy, they can be very encouraging. So if you know someone else at your university, or if you are post-grad and you, have, uh, you don't really have access to a lot of friends, there are a lot of forums out there and a lot of uh, sites like Reddit. Um, where you can find people who are in the same scenario as you, same situation, and you can connect. Give yourself all the love you need because it is a difficult journey, but it can be done. Good luck, and here is the MCAT giveaway. All right, guys, so the MCAT giveaway is going to be a 2019-2020, almost brand new, barely used Kaplan MCAT book set and a um, cars. MCAT Exam Crackers book. I really enjoyed this book um, for the car section. It really helps with getting into the mindset of the way the questions will be asked and the way they want you to answer them. So with the Kaplan book set, I'm going to have all the books. So the psychology book. Um, we'll have the high books. So this is a, not one of the topic uh, books, but it's one of the high books that just goes through and lists all the high things. So we'll have that. We'll have uh, also the Ocean book. Um, not gonna go through and list all of them. It's just Ocean, all the normal ones that you need. Cars, biology. Physics, general chemistry, and so what's going to happen is this is going to be given to one person. This is obviously the bigger item. All these will be given to a lucky winner. So that's going to be the 2019-2020 Kaplan book set. And this will be given to second place um, also. So the three things you need to do is subscribe to my channel and like this video. That's the first thing. The second thing you need to do is follow my Instagram page at med underscore head underscore at Instagram, on Instagram. And the third thing you need to do is like the picture that I post of these books and comment and tag a friend in the video. And I will be doing a randomized, uh, a randomized, a random name generator to get the names out of, uh, the people that answer this giveaway and the more people you tag on Instagram the more entries that you have I'll see you guys later I'll post this uh, giveaway winner in about one and a half to two weeks around there and I'll see you guys on the next MedHead